What's up, treasure hunters? So this evening I was able to swing by my local Goodwill store and I haven't been there in probably about four or five days or so. And I recently haven't had that much luck there, but that all changed tonight. I wanna to show you some art pieces that I found tonight, as well as a few other art pieces that I found in the last week or so, which one of them also includes an old oil painting. How do I know it's old? Well, stay tuned for that too, as I go into some key differences when you're looking at art, comparing an old oil painting versus some newer factory art. Before I get into some of the key traits to look for when trying to judge if an oil painting is old or if it's a newer or factory piece of art, I wanted to show you what I found over the past week. Um, and all these items were found at three separate thrift stores. So let's get into looking at some of this artwork. And here's the per first piece that I found. And this is part of that lot that I found tonight. And this is an original, um, it is signed but I don't know what that says. So I still gotta do some research, but this is a pretty cool, it looks almost like, like a pastel, um, some type of oil drawing. Um, it's nicely done and you can tell, um, I don't know if I'll be able to get this on camera or not, especially because of that glare, but if you look along on a painting like this or a you know if, if you're wondering if it's a print or not you can almost you can see like um the different strokes or the you know whatever they use whether it was paint or crayon or you know whatever um you can see that in there so you know it's not a print it's an original piece this actually has a gallery one sticker on the back Gallery One is a local, obviously, art gallery here around where I live. Um, and I know this is, I mean, it's not super old, but it's probably 80s or 90s. Um, and I know that because the Gallery One sticker, and this is another way just looking for clues on helping age uh, art and stuff, but the sticker has an area code of 215. I don't ever remember the area code around here being 215. It used to be 216. And then a while back, it's uh, changed to 440. So that just tells, and also there's no website on the sticker or anything. So that tells me this is probably anywhere from the late 70s to, you know, the early 90s, I would guess. Pretty cool painting. I got it for $6.99. Just got to ID it. And We'll see if I can figure out who painted this. So here's the next piece I found today um, at that Goodwill is this signed print. And this is done, I don't know 100% how to pronounce the name of this artist. I think it's Iki Masamoto, a Japanese artist. Um, this is a special edition. It is stamped and signed. <laughs> It's of a great blue heron. And this just caught my eye right away um, when I was looking through stuff, probably because I've seen a lot of, lately, a lot of Japanese art um, at auction, on auction sites and stuff. So this jumped out at me, especially seeing that it's hand signed. And this is an Island Reporter special edition. Now, I did see this selling I saw this selling for like only $25 somewhere, but then I also saw it sold on eBay for $300. So I don't really know, but it, it was only $5.99. So I definitely think it's a good buy, um, especially since it's signed. So I don't know, maybe the one for $25 was just like a poster or something, but it's a cool piece and definitely, you know, a good find for $5.99. Here's another piece that I found tonight. Um, and this is an antique lithograph map of Paris. 
and this is done by Felix Benet or Benaist, or I, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the name, but I actually saw the back of this before I ever saw the front, and that grabbed my attention first, and I'll show you that in here in a second, but it's in really good condition. Um, the only issue, there is a um, small crack up here at the corner, but it's not really that big of a deal. The actual artwork itself is in really good condition. And what I was talking about on the back, is here, it has his name and lithograph size and all that. And then there's also Oxford Art Galleries in Detroit, Michigan. So it's got a gallery sticker and all the information that I need about doing a quick search and looking this up. Um, here you can see it was $5.99. So that's definitely worthwhile. Um, I've seen this selling, you know, for around $150 online, but even the one online wasn't in as good condition as this. So this was definitely another good find all in the same night. Here's the last piece that I found tonight. And this is not signed or anything, but it really grabbed my attention just because, I mean, it's obviously pretty old and I put my finger through there because you can see how much dust is gathered on this. But this is a reverse painting, um, meaning that it's actually done on, on the glass. And you can see, avoid the glare, but I mean, it's very vibrant, pretty cool looking. The only issue, and I can fix that, but the veneer here is coming off a little bit on the bottom, but I can glue that, no problem. And this actually has the original sticker or price tag from Higby's, and it was originally 55 and got marked all the way down to it looks like $15 or something. Um, but this is only $4.99. I almost left this there, but it was too cool. And I did a quick search, um, an image search, and found two similar images or two similar pieces that were selling in a lot for $150 or sold it for $150 at auction. So um, that means, you know, I, I know I could at least get 50 bucks for this, but maybe $75. Um, and it does fit in that range where it's easy to ship and shouldn't cost me much doing that. So cool piece there. So the next piece I found, this I found at a Goodwill a couple cities over. Um, and this is obviously George H.W. Bush uh, portrait. And this is done by Gary Gouffre. And I got this for, I think, $16.49. But I mean, obviously it's super well done. And he's done a number of different presidents or even did like John Wayne, I saw. but. After searching, I could not find another one of uh, President Bush. And it is a limited edition. So this is 411 out of 1,000. Just because I couldn't find any others and some of the other limited edition ones were selling, you know, between four and $600. You know, this is definitely a good buy. If this wasn't a limited edition, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. It's so well done, frames in really good condition. And uh, it, this one also was very dirty. Um, it, this was done in 91, so it looked like someone bought it and threw it in a basement or attic or something for a while, because I really had to clean this one up a lot. So next piece I found here, um, this was done by Michael Kililia, and he is uh, an artist out of Buffalo this is an original watercolor signed here in the bottom. I found this at a local Salvation Army for $9.99. I did find, he has a website, and I did find some, um, well, he was selling a bunch of his prints, but his prints were selling for $100 and above. So I couldn't find any original artwork for sale to really judge a price, but for $9.99, an original piece like this, it's really well done. Really, um, you know, it's just a nice piece in a you know, quality heavy frame. It's a no-brainer for $9.99. So pick this up and I'll probably list this 
I don't know, 300 bucks or something um, and see if somebody buys it. If not, I'll drop the price down a bit. So this is the last piece that I found. Um, this was also found with the watercolor I just showed you at Salvation Army, also for $9.99. And this is an original watercolor. And this is the old painting that I mentioned earlier. Now, how do you tell something like this? Because, you know, you may see a similar type of piece of art that, you know, is a landscape and looks like it might be old or might have some value, but, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. So the first thing, you know, I always look for is obviously the frame. And this is definitely an older frame. It's not um, one of the, you know, cheaper department store type um, plastic frames. It's wood. Obviously, too, the subject matter matters a lot when trying to figure out, you know, is something older or is it, you know, a newer factory piece. And I'll show you a factory piece of art in a second. But the main thing that I always look at is on the back. So when you take it to look at the back of this, you can see the canvas looks really old. It's discolored. Um, you know, even on the edge, it's there's a lot of dust collected and this canvas is stretched and this is one of the main things too is it's hard to see under here but this is stuck to this wood frame by nails and that that's a really good indicator that the piece is an older piece because they didn't use staples way back in the day um so if you see a an oil painting you flip it over and you can see too like this wood is old and you know darkened and um just everything on the back you know it's very very old looking so um and then too you look you know you look under here and you see the nails that hold this there's one um they hold the canvas to the frame and it's got you know i forget what these are called i should i know this but i can't remember off the top of my head but these are uh, you know wood pieces that help stretch the canvas and keep the frame in place so all those are giveaways that this is an older piece i don't there's signature on this is so faint it's hard to even you know there's a very faint signature here so i don't know who made this but either way for 9.99 it's definitely a cool piece now let's compare this compared to like a newer factory piece of art. So actually I'm going to show you two different pieces. So this one is more probably mid century um, cause it is a little bit older and you can see it's discolored in some spots, but you know, it looks, it's not like a bad piece of art or anything, but if you do a search for the artist, a lot of times the names, are either they call it starving artists artwork so they're very they're not well known or you know sometimes they're just like made up names but you'll see a big difference one you know the frame is a lot cheaper looking and it's light and then flipping it around here's where you can definitely tell is one there's this number here um so this would be like furniture store art or um you know something like that instead of actual fine art done by an artist and then obviously staples here and not every time you know there are obviously artists that use staples um that the art is very valuable because you know they made it in the last however many years but this you can tell just by the way the canvas is stapled here and then the frame is stapled to the actual um, canvas stretcher. So, and then that combined with this number here, you know, just all says that this is probably a furniture store type of artwork. So, you know, this, some of these still can sell for some money, 
but they're not gonna, you know, get you a giant profit or anything. And this one's big too. So this isn't a really good piece to, for me to sell online. This would be more of a thing to sell locally. Now let's look at the other piece. So here's the other piece and this one isn't as evident as the other one. Um, just because I'll show you in a minute when I turn it over. But one thing is the way this is painted, um, just kind of how the actual landscape is kind of framed um, within the painting itself. So, and this is just kind of generic. It's, you know, there's nothing super special about it. Also, a lot of times too, when um, in these pieces of art, the signatures, I mean, that says, a Rogers, but sometimes they'll make the sig signatures illegible on purpose. So it looks like it was signed, you know, by some important artist, but it's really just, you know, signed so it can't be read. And then on the back of this, you can see the frame looks a lot nicer, but it's still super light. And then on the back here, you know, it's, it does have a, professionally framed by Michaels. So I don't know. I mean, this probably will just sold at Michaels or something. I, that's what I would think. Or somebody purchased it and then just had it framed a little nicer. Again, you know, not a very valuable piece of art, especially compared to some of the other older pieces that you can find. So hopefully that helps clear some things up. Um, main thing to look for always is Check out the back of any painting you see. You know, if it looks new, Chris, you see, you know, any kind of inventory numbers, or it just looks like, you know, something you'd see in a store. Uh, it's probably starving artist or factory type department store art. And, you know, if you see any kind of signatures or titles, or, you know, the canvas is nailed to the frame or the stretcher, that is a pretty good indicator that the piece is older and obviously any dates. So I hope you all enjoyed uh, the art finds I made in the last week. And hopefully you'll find some of these tips on aging paintings useful when you're out there treasure hunting yourself. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button now as I am doing a monthly giveaway and I have not drawn a winner yet for this month. I will plan on doing that at the beginning of the month, but since this month had already started, this is gonna be more of a mid-month draw. So you still have time to hit that subscribe button and be part of that giveaway. I'll be giving away a different one of my treasures every month to one of my subscribers. Thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. I wish you all the best of luck out there treasure hunting. I'll be back soon with a video on some of the recent auction buys that I have, as well as a video um, just to walk around my shop uh, out here and all the different items that I found over the past two years. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Dad!